I'm increasingly concerned by the number of videos on social media that are trying to convince you that you do not need to pay your council tax for various reasons that I'm going to dispel in this video. But I'm going to start by saying that unless an exemption applies, if the council sends you a bill for council tax, you ought to be paying it because failure to pay it is not only going to rack up a significant amount of arrears, which you are going to be chased for, but failure to comply with what's known as a liability order, if all of the procedures are followed correctly, may result in you being committed to prison for non-payment. Now, this is not intended to punish you. Rather, it is intended to encourage you to pay the debt in the first place. But let's get into some of the most popular reasons why some of these videos are trying to say that you don't need to pay your council tax. One of them is a direct challenge to the authority of the legislation itself. One of the phrases I hear so often is that legislation is not law, such as this video here. Um, and I know you might know this already, guys, but legislation is not law, okay? Parliament passed legislation, acts and statutes, they don't pass any laws. Now, as I've said in previous videos, legislation is a form of primary law. Acts of Parliament, which are created by the Westminster Parliament, which is the supreme lawmaking body in the United Kingdom. But legislation is not limited to Acts of Parliament. It also incorporates statutory instruments. A statutory instrument is a little bit like an Act of Parliament in that it is a written codified document of law, but it typically allows an Act of Parliament to be enforced without the passing of a further Act of Parliament, which obviously requires further steps than a statutory instrument. Accordingly, statutory instruments are referred to as secondary legislation, with Acts of Parliament being primary legislation. All of the above, together with common law, which is decisions made by judges, you can think of as the law of England and Wales, and of course, Scotland and Ireland. Now, the reason some of these videos talk about legislation and say it isn't law is because the obligation to pay council tax is derived from one such piece of primary legislation. Council tax itself was introduced by the Local Government's Finance Act of 1992, which replaced the community charge as it was previously known. Council tax is now used throughout England, Wales and Scotland to fund approximately one quarter of expenditure of local services. For example, adult social care, children's services, refuse collection or rubbish collection, schools and leisure facilities. And of course, it is administered by your local authority. Now, as I mentioned previously, the statutory instrument which enables the enforcement of such an act of parliament in this case is the council tax administration and enforcement regulations of 1992 which is a statutory instrument created in 1992 and it has a number which is 613. These regulations go hand in hand with the act that introduced council tax and these regulations enable the enforcement of the payment of council tax. So this is to debunk one of the claims in such social media videos claiming that you don't have to pay council tax, i.e. that legislation is not law. Legislation very much is law and it comes in various forms. As I've said, acts of parliament as primary legislation, statutory instruments as secondary legislation, typically to enforce the act of Parliament. But that brings us neatly on to the second common reason that these videos are claiming that you don't have to pay council tax. That being to explain to you the nature and legality of a contract and going on to say that there is no contract between you and the council and therefore you shouldn't have to pay it. But this argument, respectfully, is fundamentally flawed because your obligation to pay council tax does not arise from a contract with the council, far from it. It's imposed upon the property primarily with some personal element to it, which I'll come back to later, but is imposed by the legislation. It does not come about by way of a contract. Now, in a very simple sense, yes, I can agree, there is no valid contract between the householder and the council because the obligation doesn't arise out of a contractual agreement. So accordingly, there's no need in this video for me to go on to explain the fundamental principles of a contract because it's simply not relevant. One of the more novel reasons I've seen in a social media video is where an individual made a subject access request to the local magistrate's court, which replied to say that they held no personal data about that individual making the request. But again, with respect, this assessment of the situation is fundamentally flawed because a liability order, which is similar to a judgment, is what the council will apply to the magistrate's court for. But the magistrate's court will not hold on to that person's details for any longer than is necessary. So the council will make an application for this order. 
the magistrate, if everything is in order, will grant that application for the order. But then the magistrate's court is going to send all of the case files into an archive, and they will most likely not be stored at the local magistrate's court itself, owing to the number of cases that it deals with and that it simply won't have the facility to store them. Another reason some videos challenge council tax and its enforcement particularly with regard to sending someone to prison for non-payment, is essentially a discussion around Regulation 47 of the 1992 regulations and a case of Woodcock, which had a judgment handed down in 2018, which again, with respect, is often misunderstood, and I will explain why. First of all, Regulation 47 of the 1992 regulations provides that where a billing authority has sought to enforce payment by the use of the Schedule 12 procedure, and the debtor is an individual who is attain the age of 18 years and the enforcement agent reports to the authority that he's unable for whatever reason to find any or sufficient goods of the debtor to enforce the payment the local authority may apply to the magistrate's court for the issue of a warrant committing the debtor to prison. Now, as I said, this case of Woodcock from 2018 has been incorrectly referred to, essentially because in this case, a lady had been sent to prison for 81 days for falling into arrears with council tax payments, failed to pay it, and failed to turn up when she was summoned to court. However, following appeal, the court did quash her sentence because the magistrates had made a number of serious mistakes in procedure when sending her to prison. However, the ultimate finding of the case is that the system for enforcing liability of unpaid council tax by way of imprisonment using these regulations was not unfair and was not unlawful. So if you come across any of these social media videos that are telling you that council tax is unenforceable because there's no contract or that because legislation is not law, all referencing this case and saying that council tax and sending you to prison for non-payment is unlawful because this case said so, each of these arguments are with respect misguided information and I urge you not to listen to them. You can and should of course check with your local authority whether you have any exemption from paying council tax for example, if you are a student, but ultimately, if you are sent a bill by your local authority because your property attracts council tax, I would urge you in the strongest of terms not to ignore it, not to think that any of these videos are correct in that you can just ignore it and not pay it without any consequences. So as always, please be careful where you get your information from and if in doubt, revert to the official sources or seek formal legal advice. But in the meantime, thank you for watching.